Welcome to the Superintendent of Pensions webinar on Locked In Pensions. This webinar is for you if your pension funds are locked in and you're trying to find out if there is a way to unlock them. Maybe you're facing financial challenges and feel that accessing locked in funds is the answer. Did your financial institution advise you to contact the Superintendent of Pensions for clarification? If you think your financial institution has no right to keep your funds locked in, or you don't understand why you can't get access to those funds, keep watching. In the next few minutes, we'll explain why pension funds are locked in. Sometimes those funds can be unlocked, but the exceptions are limited, and we'll tell you about that. We'll also explain why you may not be able to unlock your pension funds at this time and how that may change under new BC legislation. And we'll tell you what your options are right now. But first, let's talk a bit more about your situation. Our office receives many inquiries from people facing financial challenges who feel they must get access to locked-in funds. We understand that financial challenges can be overwhelming but while a few jurisdictions do allow funds to be withdrawn because of financial hardship, British Columbia does not currently allow this. The Superintendent of Pensions cannot unlock your funds because of financial hardship. Your financial institution cannot unlock your funds based on financial hardship. Your government representative, your MLA or MP, must also abide by current legislation and cannot unlock your funds. The good news is, the legislation is changing to allow some locked-in pension funds to be released in specific circumstances of hardship. But that will take some time to come into force. Let's review the current options. If your financial institution has already told you that your pension funds can't be unlocked, you may be wondering whether the superintendent of pensions can help you. First of all, it's important to recognize that pension funds are not personal savings accounts. Under existing legislation, they are set up by your employer or union to ensure you have money for your retirement. Except under specific exceptions, the money will not be available until you retire. We'll tell you about those exceptions in a moment. What does the Superintendent of Pensions do? The Superintendent of Pensions administers pension law established by the British Columbia Legislature. The superintendent has no independent power to change laws and has no authority to permit pension funds to be unlocked because of financial hardship. Until new legislation comes into force, you won't be able to unlock your funds for that reason. If you have been following along and haven't found any solutions, don't give up yet. At the end of this webinar, we'll provide the names of other organizations that may be able to help if you find yourself in serious financial difficulties. Before that, you should understand what exceptions are already in place to the restrictions on locked-in pension funds. You should also understand that any lump sums withdrawn from a pension plan, Life Income Fund, or LIF, or RRSP, are fully taxable as income in the year they are withdrawn. Yes, there are already some exceptions allowing you to unlock your pension funds. So what are the exceptions? They are limited to these four specific situations. Small vested benefits, reaching age 65 and total entitlement, a permanent departure from Canada, physician certified shortened life expectancy. Conditions will apply. Forms are available on the Financial Institutions Commission website. These must be completed by you and sent to your plan administrator or the savings institution where your funds are held. Do not send them to the Superintendent of Pensions. First, let's define small vested benefits. A pension plan, registered retirement savings plan, or life income fund holding a total value not exceeding 20% of the year's maximum pensionable earnings under the Canada Pension Plan may be released from the locking in conditions. If your money is still in the plan and you are a former member or the surveying spouse of a deceased member or a former member, the Pension Benefits Standards Act, PBSA, also entitles you to receive your benefit entitlement in cash if your monthly pension payable at normal retirement is or will be less than one-twelfth of 10% of the year's maximum pensionable earnings. Be aware that the threshold changes each year. 
If the total amount in your locked-in RRSP, or LIF, is less than the annual threshold, you may unlock your pension. Again, you should check each year to determine what the small amount threshold is for locked-in RRSPs and LIFs. An RRSP, or LIF, containing more than the threshold amount is not allowed to be split into smaller amounts in order to qualify for unlocking. A financial institution that splits a locked-in RRSP, or LIF, into portions any smaller than the annual allowable amount is in breach of the Pension Benefit Standards Regulation. No forms are required for the small vested option, and there is no age restriction. A person age 65 or older is entitled to unlock his or her pension entitlements if the sum of all that person's entitlements in every locked-in RRSP, LIF, and defined contribution pension plan under British Columbia's jurisdiction is less than 40% of the year's maximum pensionable earnings. The amount changes annually. A person who qualifies under this provision may transfer the money to a regular RRSP or receive it as a cash lump sum. Just a reminder, any lump sums withdrawn under this exemption are fully taxable as income for the year in which they are withdrawn. If you have a spouse, the commutation can only be completed if the spouse waives entitlements through the completion of Form 2 in the proper manner and a copy is filed with each relevant financial institution. If you are permanently leaving Canada, then after two or more years of non-residency, you can apply to unlock your pension funds. You will need a Canada Revenue Agency Form, NR7. In order to commute a pension entitlement under this provision, you must complete a Form 6, Certificate of Non-Residency, and file a copy of it with each relevant financial institution. You must also attach to the completed Form 6 written evidence that the Canada Revenue Agency has determined the person to be a non-resident of Canada for tax purposes. If you have a spouse, the commutation can only be completed if the spouse waives entitlements through the completion of Form 2, in the proper manner, and a copy is filed with each relevant financial institution. Again, any lump sums withdrawn from a pension plan are fully taxable as income for the year in which they are withdrawn. And you should be aware that not all plans allow unlocking based on departure from Canada. Plans are not required to make this option available. The Pension Benefits Standards Act allows a pension plan, RRSP, or LIF, to contain a provision allowing for the withdrawal as a payment in a lump sum, or a series of payments, due to a disability or terminal illness that is likely to considerably shorten the person's life. In order to commute a pension entitlement under this provision, you must provide certification from a physician practicing in Canada that the disability or illness is likely to considerably shorten your life. If you have a spouse, the commutation can only be completed if the spouse waives entitlements in the proper manner and a copy is filed with the relevant financial institution. Again, you must complete Form 2, the Spousal Waiver Form, as required. As we mentioned earlier, new legislation will change pension law in British Columbia. This is Bill 38. It has been passed, but will not come into effect until it is proclaimed. Regulations are still being drafted, and the legislation is not expected to come into force until the fall of 2015. But the good news is that those regulations are expected to permit some funds to be unlocked in cases where financial hardship can clearly be demonstrated. The regulations will set out specific criteria on how financial hardship will be determined. Individuals will apply directly to their financial institution for financial hardship withdrawals, rather than to the superintendent of pensions. Other provinces have also been moving in this direction. So. The superintendent cannot unlock pension funds, and your MLA and MP cannot unlock pension funds. Is there any appeal mechanism? No, there is no appeal process, but there are other resources you can access for assistance. If you're running out of options, you may want to seek expert advice on how to manage your financial challenges. The Credit Counseling Society of BC provides professionally certified counsellors to assist with managing bills and living expenses, exploring your options to get out of debt and regain financial stability, 
repaying your debts in manageable monthly payments. They can be reached at 1-888-527-8999. If you would like to get legal help, please contact the Canadian Bar Association's Lawyer Referral Service. For a modest fee, they will arrange a consultation with a lawyer. You can contact the service at this web address. And remember, crisis lines aren't only for people in crisis. You can call for information on local services or if you just need someone to talk to. If you are in distress, call 310-6789. Do not add 604, 778, or 250 before the number. 24 hours a day to connect to a BC crisis line without a wait or busy signal. The crisis line operators have received advanced training to help you and tell you about what other services may be available. If someone tells you that there is another way to unlock your pension funds, you should be aware that this is likely a scam please email us about it at pensions at ficombc.ca. Schemes like this could end up costing you a lot of money, and the Canada Revenue Agency may get involved. Thanks for watching this video. We hope it has been helpful. We've included links to pension legislation for your reference, including a link to our website. You can also replay this video and review the material.